Good morning chaps. While I'm sat here surrounded by Dominic's Lego, uh, I've come back home after dropping Gemma off at work to put together a recipe for tomorrow. Considering I didn't finish work until well past 8.30, uh, I thought I'd better do it this morning so we're set and ready to go for the morrow. Uh, we also received our ARAS registration so we are now licensed wholesalers as well as retailers of beer. Yes. That took a long time didn't it? All that hard work paid off in the end though. So let's run through what I like to do on a brew day. So I have a checklist here which I use when I brew a batch of beer commercially. So it contains a lot more information than you would normally get on a beer smith checklist for instance. We have 10 different readings for the mash temperature so we can take 10 readings around the mash tun and then average it out to give us an actual uh, an actual idea of what the temperature of the mash tun is. And then we've got the same for gravity readings for the boil and the runoff to make sure that we hit our targets in that respect because if we miss our transfer targets that throws off our boil targets and if we miss our boil gravity targets then that throws off our predicted gravity and the IBUs and everything else and that means if we've already got pump clips printed for instance then chances are you're not going to hit your ABV or you're going to have to add water and I hate adding water to a beer or boiling longer to dilute uh, to concentrate so I'm very keen on using gravity points to determine how your brew's going. I never look at volumes. Whatever comes out of the fermenter when the batch is complete, that's what you've got. The key is follow your gravity targets. Make sure that you want to be as close as you can with your volumes. So what you do is you measure that volume. Let's say you wanted 500 litres and you got 480. Or you punch 480 back in because that will change your uh, hop to gravity ratio, your IBU to SG ratio. But the most important thing to do in terms of commercial beer brewing is making sure that your alcohol by volume is correct and uh, you have to prove it. You have to prove that you've done everything you can so this is why I follow gravity targets. And then on the second page we have uh, some more pieces of info on there. I mean I'll let you have a, a little scroll through it and uh, yeah we're just sort of measuring this does say bricks I don't have a refractometer anymore that measures uh, measures like it used to I'm just gonna have to use the old handheld to the eyeball jobby for now until we can get something else but yeah there's a little checklist on here make sure you've turned the heat exchanger taps off you know and uh, on the other page check boxes to make sure you've done an acid rinse on your fermenters everything's sanitary and then there's a fermentation record along the bottom which tracks fermentation over a three week period to allow us to uh, determine what's happening when you can see the parameters that were that were listing at the top there and then uh, down the bottom for racking off just what's going where estimated final gravity racking specific gravity and if we've got to send pins, firkins, bottles, whatever. So that's our brew day checklist. So we're cracking into effectively dial one today although I've named this test batch so it won't be going on the uh, uh, on the BMS system as guile one because I want to start guile one as guile one well, it is in terms for HMRC it is guile one and we've got some dose guide charts that I put together for caustics and acids that one's the acid one this is the caustic one just so we can make sure that we're not overdoing it with any sanitizers or cleaners. I had all this stuff at IVB uh, but obviously that's uh, that's vanished so what I've done 
it's pulled them all back up. I created the files on the computer, I had copies of them, so I've just pr printed them all off again. We've got a Murphy's Water Report. I need to get a newer one, but this is going to be good enough. It's going to get us close enough for the next couple of weeks. So my treatment for pale ales and bitters, for instance, consists of 0.521 millilitres of AMS per litre of brewing liquor and 0.779 grams per litre of DWB. Now these again will change, we'll alter them in the future, but going forward it's all I got. So it's all I got. Just done a quick print off of the uh, Protoflock tech spec sheets just because I didn't see it in my uh, in my Kosho HACCP files. So uh, I just like to keep hold of all of these spec sheets. And then we've got the recipe itself. So this is the test batch for Harrison's Brewery. I'm gonna go for a 400 litre batch size and it's gonna be a pale or a blonde ale. Uh, and I'm using Ella hops. I've got a bag of 2015 Ella which has been opened, so I'm going to get it used up. So anybody who's interested, here's a bit of a freebie for you. Here's a bit of a freebie. Anybody who wants to try this, or if you want to come to the brew shed in a couple of three weeks time and try it, then feel free. I don't mind sharing. Sharing's caring. That's what it's all about. Us brewers, you know. And here's the second page of the recipe. Because I know you'll want to see every little detail. There we go. There might be a couple of errors on there. Like I say, I've sat down and done it this morning. But uh, I'm pretty sure I've nailed it. See, the yeast, for instance, it says one pack of Safael. I'm at Actually, what I've done is uh, I've gone on the proviso that one gram of yeast has 20 billion cells. So I'm putting uh, 80 grams per hectolitre of USO5 into the tank. And I've just put one pack there because the brewing software doesn't allow me to dictate grams. It says packages, so uh, I've done one package that contains enough yeast, if you know what I mean. In a roundabout sort of way. So there's all that. I'm going to go and get the keys, jump in the car, and we're going to go down to the brewery and weigh out the ingredients. I need some scales as well. I don't have any scales, so I might have to nip into Argos or something and pick a set up on the way. Let's go. Well, we're in. Stu's not taking the rubbish yet, I see. The chiller's still at nine point, minus 9.3, which is excellent. We've got no leak from the CLT, which is even better. And the frigging control panel turned on, all on its own. And we've got no power running anywhere. I'm very pleased, I'm very excited. No leaks, no drips, no nothing. The floor's nice and dry. Yes, right. Brilliant. Well, let's set to on getting this recipe to a realistic production of beer. Oh, it's nice to see everything in the, in the paracetic acid as well. Got some nice little bubbles on there, formed up quite nicely, look at that. Yeah, nice and clean. Right, so looking at this, we need 172 litres of water to mash in. So what I'm going to do is take this, which I think is around 575 at the minute, down to whatever it has to be and transfer it into the boil kettle. And we'll use the boil kettle to heat the mash water, the strike water, and then we'll fill this back up and uh, with exactly the amount of water we need to sparge plus 100 litres just in case because we don't know yet do we so we'll add the strike water in there the sparge water in there right we did come across an issue I transferred the water into the boil kettle and I realised 
that 172 litres or isn't enough to cover the thermoprobe. So I can't set that overnight to heat up the strike water because it's going to roll in boil because the probe's going to be out of the liquid so it won't be able to tell the control panel that it's got to temperature. So doing small batches on here is something uh, that is doable but all the water is going to have to be heated up in the HLT. Not a problem, I've worked it out, I can actually fit enough water in the HLT. So, you know, every cloud and all that has a silver lining. What I did notice, however, is that this outlet down the bottom here, yeah, that cheeky little fella there, that is the level of the liquid when you drain, which means that there's almost 50 litres dead space in the bottom of that kettle. So in order to avert that, I took out, you'll remember, the, uh, the perforated tube that Andy from GC kindly sent me. Well, I've made it into a dip tube. You see that? So we can now come in and we can dip down and pick up an extra 30 litres of water. So this needs testing, of course. And there's a plug to go in the end. I suppose that doesn't matter, does it, right now, for testing? So that needs to go in there and Oh, go that way. Come on. She does fit. Don't worry, I've not gone mad. There we go. So, she's in. <laughs> but you panic for a minute then, didn't you? So now, with that in position, I'll just go and check it's the right orientation. And while I've put that in there, I've also managed to fit a nozzle onto the end of the whirlpool to combat the lack of a jet. Now we've got a jet. Is that enough whirlpool for you? I think it friggin' is. to go. HLT is ready to go. Mash ton ready to go. We've got malts, liquor treatment, all ready to go. I'm just going to stick the lid onto her and uh, put her to bed for the night I guess. Pumps ready to go. Uh, what do I need to do? I could do with putting some acid in the boil kettle to recirculate through the plate chiller first thing in the morning and then once that's done we'll shoot it across and recirculate into the fermenter. Make sure we've got an acid rinse in the fermenter. So I'll probably just do that now and then I'm going for a pint. Go home, it's gone five o'clock so I'm not exactly going home early, but I'll go home and be ready and refreshed for tomorrow morning, man. Yes. Right, chaps, Gem, do you know what time it is? Twenty past seven. Eight. It's twenty past eight. I've had a couple of three beers to celebrate something which deserves celebration and funnily enough, it's not the brewing of beer tomorrow. All will be revealed. I love leaving them on a cliffhanger, you know. We'll tell them another night, we'll tell them another night. There is something fantastic that we have to announce to you, but uh, now is not the time. 
But one thing I do want to put across before we sign off tonight is me and Gemma have just both been stood here literally doing this. Oh, you've no idea what it means to have the aroma of grain in the brewery for the first time. It's like an old friend has come round to see you. It's happening. Tomorrow is the brew day. We are making beer tomorrow. We've had, we've had, what, how many days? Let's go back to the first vlog, the very first vlog when we started rolling steel. We'll have a look how many days it was. I'm guessing, I'm it's gonna February, say, I'm gonna say it's been a hundred days since I bought the slip rollers to now, or till today. When you're watching this, I'm brewing beer. Is that a hundred days? Hundred, at least a hundred, 120. I am in no illusion what an achievement this has been. And the fact that we can smell we can smell the victory. We can smell it. It's gonna to happen tomorrow. I'm so excited. I know. <laughs> I am, but it's unbelievable. So, uh, yeah, you're gonna have a good night tonight, love. Woohoo! <laughs> right, we'll see you tomorrow. On that note, hey! hey. <laughs> Four fingers.